Hey guys, uh, Ubalol again, and uh, in this video we're gonna do something uh, completely different from the others. Uh, because as we all know, uh, obfuscation is a big part of uh, .NET cracking, so uh, I'm gonna go over some uh, deobfuscation de techniques. And uh, this is a application made by the same HF member as the last video, uh, Chewbox, so a big thanks to him. Uh, and basically this is a lightly obfuscated application. As you can see, uh, all the uh, names here are scrambled and uh, very unpleasant to look at. So, like, if you go around in the assembly, it's gonna look very weird and hard to navigate because you have no idea what these things are. So, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna make an application to uh, rename all these to uh, readable names. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. So, uh, you're gonna need uh, mono.cecil. You can just Google it, or I'll maybe, maybe put a link to it in my thread or something. But uh, yeah, you need that to uh, modify the uh, application from uh, C Sharp. So uh, let's start a project here. Just call something like CVD Skater. And uh, yeah, so basically, this video is going to be about coding. So if you're not, uh, not interested in that, just interested in cracking, you don't need to view this. But uh, it can be very helpful and you'll probably learn a few things so uh, I recommend you to look at it but uh, yeah right so you need to uh, import mono.cecil and uh, mono.cecil.rocks uh, never mind we don't, we don't really need this right now so just take this one and uh, yeah in this uh, application we're just gonna make some uh, deobfuscate the names of the application so uh, we're just gonna make a little method here public uh, void uh, rename symbols and we're gonna add a parameter here right so uh, let's just get this out of the way to load this we're just gonna do rename symbols sorry I'm just gonna console read just so it won't stop at the second start make that static and uh, rename symbols assembly definition that uh, read assembly and um, you need some basic C sharp skills to follow in this video so I'm not gonna go over the total basics so you have to know that before you watch, watch this but uh, I think you'll be fine okay so uh, basically uh, in an assembly there's uh, I'm going to show you the structure of assembly. So if we uh, do this for each of our modjef in uh, assembly definition uh, modules, uh, basically this is a module, and in this case there's only one module, but uh, in other applications there might be more than one. So we're just going to loop through every module that we find in the application and uh, we're gonna rename these on the way so it's very simple with the model system. you just type moddef dot name equals and you enter the name here so we're gonna need some uh, readable names and since there are more than one uh, say classes and methods we can't just name the method we need to uh, have a number behind them or something to make them unique so I'm gonna make a few counters here uh, mod um, type method parameter uh, field and property let's just begin with that uh, and we're gonna do this um, just need to type it zero there so uh, it will name them in the uh, so the first module will be uh, mod underscore zero and the next one mod underscore one etc so yeah that's I like to keep it that way it's a nice naming scheme so you know what they all do alright so uh, we can see in the module there's uh, these namespaces but uh, we'll fix that later we we'll start with the types and I'll tell you why soon but yeah um, basically these are types or uh, they're basically classes but uh, in this uh, in Cecil they're called types so uh, yeah, we're gonna rename these. So uh, we're gonna start with that. So for each type definition in modjef.types, 
we as type type def that name equals type underscore plus uh, type plus plus right so now when we run this application it's gonna rename the uh, modules to mod underscore and the number and all the types to type underscore and the number but um, as you can see there's more things here such as properties and fields and uh, let's see methods parameters so basically we'll just follow the uh, tree structure here in reflector and uh, rename them as we go so uh, we start with types then we go to methods and we in the methods we rename the uh, parameters and uh, then also we rename the fields in the uh, type so uh, yeah let's loop through the uh, methods here uh, and they're contained within the uh, type definition and not the mod definition so uh, type def dot mod methods and the same thing here method at name equals method underscore plus method plus plus uh, and uh, yeah so now we have these three renamed and uh, there's some other things in the type definition that I showed you so we need to do these as well for each field definition in type def dot fields We'll do uh, the same thing here. Field def dot name equals field underscore plus field plus plus. Let me just add a zero to all these. Okay, so uh, also inside the method, you see uh, we have the parameters. We need to rename them as well. So for each of our param def in m def dot parameters same thing again here oops sorry equals param plus param plus plus and uh, the last thing that we need to rename is the properties and they're also contained within the type definition so we'll type them within this scope here really needed all right so but the um, when you read the uh, rename methods you need to think about a few things because uh, the constructor this is a method as well but uh, if you rename the constructor it's not gonna work and the application is just gonna crash so you need to make some exceptions here so uh, but Mandela system has a nice support for that so we can just do if not mdef is constructor and not mdef is runtime special name. I'm not 100% sure what this is runtime special name is, but uh, you need to exclude that so you don't get any errors or the application will crash. And uh, yeah, let's try this. So now we just need to save the assembly after we renamed all these. Um, as dev dot we'll just use the same path here but with a different name. Obscure two, and uh, yeah, let's run this. See if it works. All right, no errors, and we see a second file here, and it opens fine. Let's uh, check it in Reflector. See if it did anything. Yeah, I see mod uh, zero, and the namespaces. I'm gonna rename them too, as uh, after this, and you see the types are all renamed. Type three, type four, blah 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 and uh, the fields, field 8, property 0 and the constructor, the name of the constructors are intact so that's fine and the method and parameters are also renamed so uh, we've done most of the work here now but um, yeah we're gonna do uh, the uh, namespaces as well and uh, this is a little different because when you rename uh, namespaces you need to take an account to um, because if a namespace has more than one type and you rename the namespace they can split up and get into very strange places and jump between uh, namespaces so you need to 
keep the same namespace for the uh, type between rename them. So we need to make a, a list of the namespaces and the types contained by the namespaces. So equals new list sorted list um, string and list of type definitions. So this is going to be the name of the namespace, and this is going to be the a list of the types within the namespace. So we're going to loop through all the namespaces again. Um, in modules, let's, sorry about that. We'll do the same thing as we did here. There we go. Alright, so think here if namespace list dot keys contains type def dot namespace we're just gonna add the type definition to that uh, key. Um, But if it's not, we're just gonna need to make a new entry in the list. So namespace list that add um, space and new list, and I'll just add the type def that is currently on. All right, so uh, let's break, put a break on there, see how this works out. Okay, so it gets all the namespaces and the uh, types contained within it. And uh, now we're just gonna get to uh, renaming them. So uh, we'll do another for each loop here. For each type def, or actually uh, member in namespace list. For each type def in member dot key. No, sorry, value. Because the value is the list of type definitions here. We're gonna do this type definition dot namespace equals sorry we need to make a new name for the namespace so we're gonna add another integer here um, names sorry um, your new name equals ns for namespace plus namespace plus plus All right so we have a new name here and uh, yeah, I think that should be it right now actually. So let's just clear this list that we're done with it. And uh, try the application again. Let's just remove this. And see if it works. Yes, it works fine. And let's see if it remain renamed the uh, namespaces as well. And yes, it did. So now everything is renamed except for the assembly name here. And that's just a simple fix. We can see the version is this, so we just copy that. And uh, we can just add, it th add this to the start. Name equals new. That's a name definition. Uh, name, we can name it whatever we want. It's just um, obfuscated because that's what the assembly name is. And the version will just do that. Um, oh, sorry. New version. I think that will work. Let's try this again. Starts fine. And yes, it's renamed. So, yeah, that's basically it for this uh, video. We got all the methods and all the members of the assembly renamed. So they're readable again. And uh, yeah. In the future, Shoebox will make uh, more advanced obfuscation methods, and I'll keep making videos on how to uh, deobfuscate them to uh, show you guys and teach you how to do it yourself. So, hopefully, in the future, some of you guys will make uh, your own deobfuscators. And uh, yeah, that's everything for this video. See ya.